Hello, we're here with MOSO Update, a monthly program where we connect you with campus news and events here at Missouri Southern State University. I'm Kate Kelly. And I'm Sean Gordon, the new co-anchor for our student news program. We are proud to bring you up to speed on all of the most exciting events that have been happening around campus this month. So Kate, what has been going on recently? Well, we've had a series of fun campus activities take place over the break, including a traditional visit from some all-stars you may be a fan of. The annual Cardinal Caravan has rolled into town, and fans have flocked in for miles to see their favorite players. Students and members of the community of all ages have the opportunity to meet several Cardinals baseball players, including Stephen Piscotti, Greg Garcia, Paul DeYoung, Tom Lawless, and Kyle McClellan. It's really neat. I, this, this place seems like it really fills up and, and, uh, and a lot of excitement and everything in the air, so it just uh, it kind of brings spring a little closer. Players gave out free autographs on a variety of items ranging from baseball bats to hats. And for one retired Cardinal, this event is something he looks forward to. You know, way to say uh, thanks to the fans. You know, mm -hmm. some it's a drive for them to come to the ballpark every day and they, you know, put it uh, in their schedule. In addition to the traditional fanfare, the United Way of Southwest Missouri in Southeast Kansas sold raffle tickets for individuals to win a chance at some Cardinals promotional items. The proceeds benefit United Way programs. The caravan visit is sponsored by the Missouri Farm Bureau and a partnership between the Cardinals and Zimmer Radio. Reporting for MOSO Update, I'm Kate Kelly. I can definitely admire these people for taking the time to visit us and promote awareness for a good cause. These kids really seem to like it and that just makes their day, huh? Absolutely, and I had a lot of fun too. But that's not all that happened over the break. That's right, while the Cardinal Caravan was coming here, one Missouri Southern group took a trip down to the good old state of Texas. Let's see what happened. Well, it's one for the money, two for the Hello, I am Alex Still here reporting for a MOSO update. Today is January 4th and I am in Dallas, Texas. Well, I am here with the Missouri Southern State University Jazz Orchestra. Today is the ninth annual convention for the Jazz Educational Networking, or GEN for short. Play the music I've always loved listening to is just a really great opportunity. <laughs> you have to go back and say, what was it about that music that impacted people so profoundly? Uh, jazz is just uh, it's a freeing sort of art. There are like, certain events or certain clinics. That's where that funk and that stank comes in on it. <laughs> <laughs> jazz is just like, it's a creative outlet. Burn my house, steal my car. Hello, I'm here with Mr. Freddie Green. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. All right, so what is your position here at Missouri Southern State University? I'm a professor of music. I teach trumpet. I teach the jazz orchestra. On Wednesday, we left at about 6.45 in the morning and trekked on down to Dallas. Um, came down, registered, got checked into all of our hotels, and then from there, we had the opportunity to go uh, listen to some one wonderful performances uh, by some of the top institutions as well as professional ensembles. Um, afterwards, we had the next day we had a performance, which was about at noon. Um, we're one of three Missouri ensembles that's here, so we got an opportunity to hear Web City High School. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to hear UMSL, uh, University of Missouri St. Louis, and then we performed at 12 on Thursday. All right, so also as an educator, how was the clinic for you? It was amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. Um, two wonderful, wonderful clinicians. Um, we had the vocalist from the Count Basie Orchestra who got to work with a band and our singers um, and showed a lot of interest in just the things happening at Missouri Southern State University. Awesome. It's the comments that came back and, and, and the time that they took and the investment that they took. All right, well, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the convention today. This has been Alexander Still reporting for MOSO Update. It's so great to see our students going to different places and having unique experiences. It certainly is, but another unique experience came in the form of a visiting author who had much to say about one of her best-selling novels. I'm here in Southern Spiva Library where author Anne Valente will speak as a part of the Saltzman Visiting Writers series. Why are you here tonight? Yeah, I'm here tonight because Dr. Maudlin somehow got this famous writer here uh, and he incorporated one of her short stories by Light We Knew Our Names into our class last semester um, and since then I was motivated to read her debut novel um, Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down. It's a great novel uh, and I wanted to come maybe ask a question uh, and see her answer the questions of other people. 
about the novel? Originally from St. Louis, Anne Valente currently teaches creative writing and literature at Hamilton College in Clinton, New York. What made you want to become an author? That's a good question. Um, I guess just the desire to communicate something, maybe, and I thought I was okay at writing, so that was sort of the avenue that it took, but, um, but yeah, and then I, I just sort of determined that I liked it and then just kept doing it after that. <laughs> During her visit, Valente read from her novel, Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down, followed by a Q&A session and a book signing. So what did you learn tonight from listening to the author speak? That is, uh, it is a, writing is something, it's something uh, interesting and exciting, yet complicated, but the way, the, the way she put it, that it's just be yourself and create the characters you can relate to. Did you enjoy speaking at Missouri Southern? Of course, I very, very much enjoyed speaking at Missouri Southern. Um, I'm from Missouri. I've done very few events and readings in Missouri, so it's very, very exciting to be here um, and to meet all of you. Everybody had great questions. Um, yeah, it's a really wonderful evening. Reporting from Oso Update, I'm Maddie West. In addition to this author spotlight, students had the opportunity to check out some artistic pieces from young creative minds in the area. Students from kindergarten through 12th grade had their work displayed in an exhibit at Missouri Southern's Spiva Art Gallery from January 14th through February 2nd. The exhibit featured original works of art from students attending schools throughout the Joplin area. Works were selected by each school's art educators from student projects created during the fall semester and special receptions were held for the young artists. That's really, really cool, Kate. It just goes to show that artwork can come in all shapes and sizes. Absolutely. We have art of a theatrical nature taking place this month as well. Really? Hmm. Well, I'm sure the audience is eager to find out exactly what that is. Southern Theater will present the musical Pippin at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, February 21st through Saturday, February 24th in the Taylor Performing Arts Center at MSSU. The show is directed by our own Dr. Jim Lyle and will feature music and musical direction by Stephen Swartz and Dr. Susan Smith. All right, so let's get some background information on you. What's uh, your major? What grade are you in? I am a junior vocal performance major. All right, so, so far, what is your role in Pippin? Um, I play the role of the leading player who is kind of like the ringleader of the whole show. So what was your very first play or musical? Um, it was this one act my freshman year of high school called Darcy's Cinematic Life and it was basically like an eighth grade Mean Girls and mm -hmm. I played this girl Darcy's little brother and so that <laughs> it was my first. Um, Pippin actually is one of my favorite musicals from when I first started to get into musical theater. I just thought that it was a lot of fun and the music is really fun and the story really is up for a lot of interpretation. So a lot of it is what you make it and I think that that's what's really interesting. Okay, so how, how has been rehearsal so far? I know it's been at least a full week of rehearsal, even weekends. So how has that been on you? It's been a lot. Um, so we started at the... Um, beginning of January and we had snow days and then so we had from as soon as the semester started up until now which is the last week of February so like six weeks with like three or four snow days in there and then so we tacked on these weekend rehearsals and really got things into shape and it's been a lot but it's also really rewarding so all right so how is working with the other cast and crew it's um a lot of fun a lot of it is with my peers both from the music department and from the theater department and so it's a lot of fun to collaborate with them in another setting versus choir or anything like that. And so it's a lot of fun to work with everybody in a different environment. Okay. Uh, what has been your favorite part so far? Um, I really love learning the music. I think that it's a lot of fun. And it, in a musical, it's what tells the story. And I think that that's what's really interesting about it. Okay. So... What, how will you see this as benefiting towards your future goal when you're done with college or even are you, do you plan on going to grad school? Yeah, I actually want to get a master's in musical theater and so I think anything that I can add to my resume um, is going to be helpful. All right. So if you would like to come down and see, I appreciate you very much, Tanner. Thank you for joining us. All right. And thank you very much and I look forward to seeing it. 
Our theater department always puts on such wonderful productions. Speaking of theater, the French Film Festival is bringing a taste of culture to MSSU through a series of films sponsored by the Harrison and June Cash International Film Society. Dr. Alan Zingerman discussed French film noir in Plaster Hall's Cornell Auditorium. A panel discussion was held with Dr. Zach Watson and Dr. Bill Cumbier from MSSU's Department of English and Philosophy in Phelps Theater, centering on the genre of film noir with a special focus on film noir as a style and as a form of narrative. Among Diabolique, other films will include The Wages of Fear, Rafifi, and Shoot the Piano Player. You know, that last one sounds scary and straight to the point. <laughs> but, you know, I do have a soft spot for classic black and white noir films because they do a great job at immersing the audience in such a dark and gritty atmosphere. I need to go watch some of those. So do I. But until then, we're going to take a short break. For now, please enjoy another segment of Campus Walking. I'm Veronica Gasway, and this is Campus Walking. This episode, we will be featuring some questions about Valentine's Day. I personally am anti-Valentine's Day, but not everyone on campus feels that way. Take a look. What is your guys' theory on campus or er, um, secret admirers? What do, you, what do you mean? Like, can you explain what you mean? Like, where do you think secret admirers like originated? Like, I mean, you know, she, some, sometimes you see like a fine like woman, and you you just too scared to shoot your shot. You don't have the courage, so you just. You admire from a distance until you like can get your, you know, get your, until you can rise up on a level, to you on her level. If you're single on Valentine's Day, what do you do? Hang out with your pals. Have a, have a Palentine's Day. Palentine. That's fun. Galentine's, right? Yeah. Um, what do you think the percentage of pet owners is that give their pets Valentine's? Uh, not high enough, I'd say. I agree with that. That's a good answer, yeah. It's only 3% is what studies show. Oh, yeah? Isn't that wrong? It should be. Like, I mean, I feel like I, I would appreciate a puppy here and there, you know, but I'd have too many puppies. Oh, not give not give pets as Valentine's Day presents, but, like, give their pets a Valentine. Give their pet. Oh, okay. Jeez. Okay. Totally. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'd give my dogs a few pet, a uh, few presents. But you would like to get a puppy for Valentine's Day. All right. All right. What is the greatest gift you've ever been given? For Valentine's Day? Yeah. Um, chocolate covered strawberries, always. Like, Do it. I got a bunch of movies once. That was cool. I miss the elementary days where everyone gave me a present. Oh, right? I feel you. It's okay. So are you guys more material or sentimental? Sentimental. It's like we want we want strawberries, but also sentimental strawberries. Yeah. We want those strawberries to have a nice message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So is there any advice you'd give to guys for Valentine's Day this year? Chocolate covered strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <clears throat> um, listen to your girl. <laughs> um, what percentage of pet owners do you think give their pets valentines? Well, as a pet owner, I would say at least 70%. <laughs> you can really tell, like, who the pet owners are because they're like, oh, yeah, like 80%. Yeah. And then everybody else is like, not very many. No. So, like, 10. I give my pet. I give my pet valentines. I feel that. I feel that, too. It's actually only like 3% is what studies show. What? Isn't that wrong? No. Sick and wrong. Dogs need love. For real. Um, what's the greatest gift you've ever received? Mm, gift? I don't know. Um, just like some notes or something that actually show that people care about you. Like they take interest in your life, so they write down something that means something to you that you actually put effort into. So, yeah. Okay, so you're more sentimental than material. Definitely. Okay, sweet. I'm Veronica Gasway. Thank you for watching Campus Walking on KGCS TV. See you next time. Welcome, Welcome to Twin, Twin time, time, where we capitalize on the fact that we were born with another person. Today we're going to have a competition to see who can make the best Valentine's Day cards in three minutes. Our time limit is three minutes, and it's starting... Now!
The pressure! <laughs> Where's the scissors? One down. <laughs> There's two pairs. Two pairs. Pair. Abby, can you pass me the scissors? No, I can't. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Every woman for herself. Less than a minute left. <gasps> what? What? I don't make the rules, guys. Okay. <laughs> we. I told you we should have done five minutes. Where's the Where's the hearts? <laughs> where's the hearts? <laughs> right there. No, <laughs> like the. Little poofy one. What the heck? Little poofy one. Oh, big one. I pointed right there. I didn't see you. This looks really done. <laughs> 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 Keep it over here, Maddie. Please. Oh, I'm going easy. Take it. <laughs> oh no! Five! Where are the parts? Four! Three! Two! I'm done! One! Pencils down! Pencils down! <laughs>we're back with Moso Update. I'm Kate Kelly. And I'm Sean Gordon. You know, Missouri Southern has always presented great opportunities for internships for our students. Although this one in particular is really exciting because it comes from a certain cartoon mouse. Picture this. For a whole semester, instead of living in Southern Missouri, you make Orlando, Florida your home. The happiest place on earth becomes your backyard. You get to work at one of the biggest theme parks in the world. You get to experience and make magic daily. My name is Mackenzie Kellum, and last semester, this was my reality. I participated in the Disney College program during the fall of 2017 and had the experience of a lifetime. The Disney College program gave me many opportunities and chances to grow, and now applications for the fall 2018 semester are open and ready for you to apply. So why should you? You get paid to work at Walt Disney World in a variety of different roles, like merchandise and attractions. You get to go to all of the parks for free on your days off. You interact with people from all over the world. You can take workshops and classes about things you will use in your future careers. And one of the best parts is, through Missouri Southern State University, you can also receive internship credits, so it won't hold you back from graduating on time. For more information on the program and to apply, visit jobs.disneycareers.com. The adventure of a lifetime is waiting for you, so what are you waiting for? For the MoSo update, this is Mackenzie Kellum. It's great to see our students involved with such a fun partner. The students have been busy here as well. The Southern Annual Fund Organization and 25 Missouri Southern State University students have teamed up in a phone-a-thon to raise $82,000 through the month of February. The money raised will go towards scholarships, facility improvements, and other general operations. Organizers say it's a great way for students to get involved on campus while connecting with alumni. Speaking of raising money, crowdfunding efforts have also spawned a week-long event in celebration of a classic horror novel. The MSSU Department of English and Philosophy is celebrating the 200th anniversary of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein as part of the Literature Lives movement. Activities throughout the first week of March will include a scary story contest, a marathon of Frankenstein films, and a series of insightful lectures and discussions about the classic novel. It's great to see a classic novel being recognized by our students today. Speaking of classics, MSSU carried on its tradition of Campus Involvement Day. Over 75 clubs and organizations exist on campus and students had the opportunity to check them out in Billingsley Student Center on January 25th. An event that occurs each semester, Campus Involvement Day provides a platform for networking and getting involved. Speaking of getting involved, Kate, the campus community had a chance to, let's say, burn some calories with a special group of people. The Missouri National Guard offered a one-hour workout at 9 a.m. on January 27th at the Bind Dick Recreation Center in Billingsley Student Center. The event was intended to promote fitness and a healthy lifestyle for the community. There was no charge to attend, and participants could customize the workout to their liking. It's very cool to see the National Guard getting involved with our community. Up next, a look into the life of a campus police officer with Ashley Zumwalt for our first Administrative Minute segment.
Hi, I'm Ashley Zumwalt. Today we're doing our administrative minute. I'm going to be doing a ride along with Officer Brian Morehouse from Missouri Southern State Police Department. So we're here today in Officer Morehouse's car. Right now we are going to drop um, money off at the bank for the foundation and the bursar's office. Officer Morehouse, how long have you been a police officer at Missouri Southern? I've been a police officer at Missouri Southern approximately three and a half years. Being able to interact with the students and faculty, I like to get around and talk to people and see if they have any issues that they need to talk about. When I graduated the academy in 2006, I went to work for Vernon County Sheriff's Office. After the about four years there, I went to Nevada Police Department, worked there about four years before I came here. I haven't had any real memorable calls as far as on campus, but I do have a couple for just regular police officer duty when I worked elsewhere. Which <laughs> One of my favorite was responding to a, a naked man running down the streets in just his socks. <laughs> that was actually a pretty fun call. We get several calls a day ranging from jump starts all the way to property crime or assaults, whatever happens on campus. Have you had to arrest someone on campus before? Yes. Does it happen often? No. <clears throat> this year I've only made one arrest, last year I made two. How many tickets do you usually give out? Probably an average of 12 to 25 a day. Students can avoid parking tickets on campus if they park in the appropriate locations for them. I fully encourage people to park where they belong. What's the most interesting part of your day? You know, it's a probably a different answer every day depending on what calls I have to go to. Let's see, the most interesting part of today is this ride along. This has been your Administrative Minute. I'm Ashley Zumwalt reporting for the MOSO Update. It's so cool to get a glimpse into a day on the job for one of our officers. Indeed. While their job is important, we shouldn't forget that law enforcement can be a dangerous task. It's not all fun and games, even when it is a ride along. That's true. But in other news, during this fall, we will be seeing the addition of a new sports team added to the MSSU lineup. Jared Brueggemann, Director of Athletics here at MSSU, has announced the addition of a new women's golf team. The program will be led by head coach Mike Wheeler and will make MSSU the 11th school in the MIAA to offer women's golf as a sport. This new female golf team will be gearing up to compete in the upcoming fall season. I'm happy to see a new women's sport at MSSU. Speaking of sports, it's time for our sports update with our new sports reporter, Tashina Coleman. Hi, welcome to Sports Update, here to bring all the sports news on Southern Campus. I'm your host, Tashina Coleman. Both the men's and women's basketball teams made it to postseason play. I got a chance to talk to women's basketball head coach, Ronnie Russell, to discuss preparation for postseason play. So, you know, this is postseason, so how will you get your team into the mindset of this postseason game? Well, we've been talking uh, last couple days uh, that it's a new season. It's you know every year you got three basically three seasons. You got your non-conference as your first season, and then you got your conference as your second season. And now we're getting into postseason, which is what we consider our third season. You know, everybody goes back to zero and zero, uh, and everybody gets ready to mindset. Uh, you know, it's it's one and done. You continue to win. You continue to play. If you lose, uh, your season's over with. So. Uh, our, we've tried to be focused on our process that we continued all year long, uh, making sure we continue to improve uh, and get prepared and get ready for the postseason, which it's, it's here. The women's team hosted Lindenwood as they started off the first round of postseason on February 26th at Ligon Platt Athletic Center. Next, they will play second round of postseason against Central Missouri on March 1st in Kansas City. Both semifinal and final round games will be played on March 3rd and 4th in Kansas City. The men's team will have a bye for the first round of postseason play. They start postseason play on March 2nd through March 4th in Kansas City. The softball team has had a rough start to begin their season as they have lost four games straight. They have been struggling on the road. On a more positive note, the baseball team has been doing great as they start off the season on an eight-game winning streak. They have been unstoppable at home. 
Men's and women's track and field plays fourth at MIAA Conference Indoor Championships. Thank you for tuning in to Sports Update. I'm Tashina Coleman and back to Kane and Sean. Thank you for that sports update, Tashina. We look forward to your next report. We conclude our campus update with a trip around the world. So I'm Mercen Liberdeva, that's my last name, and I'm from Turkmenistan. It's a little country in Central Asia. Uh, we're bordered with uh, Iran, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan, and Caspian Sea. I grew up in the capital, it's a city, so it's way different. <laughs> uh, we have a, I mean, I go out of my house, I don't know anybody, you know. I mean, I know a lot of people, but I never meet the same person every day, you know, that it's public transportation. You know, here I don't have a car, so it's kind of challenging, but there it wasn't. Um, and I grow up, it's like a DC, you know, it's a lot of embassies, it's a lot of international companies, you know, we have a lot of uh, international people there who are working, so, and I used to work as a translator or American consuls, so I was around internationals a lot. So, yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> I'm so glad that we have international students and um, people are very nice here. So. It's, that's the difference, you know, people are always like, hi, how are you doing? How is everything going on? Are you all right? Do you need any help? Do you need a ride? You know, like, they're very nice. Back home, it's not like that, you know, they're like, what's up? Good? All right, bye, you know. So that's something like that. Or um, here, like, even I pass a person, like, a little, little bit closer, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your personal space, you know. There, it's not like that. They're like, like you know, they just don't care. <laughs> so that's a difference. I went to a community college in Moberly area community college. It's like four hours away from here. And this past three, four, three years, um, Missouri Southern keep coming into my, uh, in my, like in, in front of me all the time, you know, like or I would meet person who recruits, you know, or I would hear something about it, you know, all the time. And I was like, no, 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 Missouri. I don't want to stay in Missouri. I want to go and travel and stay somewhere else, like somewhere that I haven't been yet, like because I learned the culture of Missouri, you know. And then, I applied for a university like in Ohio and then it didn't work out so I was very down and then I lived with a host family and my host sister she goes to OCC Ozark Christian College here and her parents were like let's go and check it like come on and then she was like Marjan let's be like in the same town you know so she encouraged me to apply everything worked well and that's how it worked. <laughs> um, so I want to focus on event planning but if it's not going to work out I do want to do business management something management working with people managing something. So I hope after uh, Missouri Southern I will be able to get an internship for a year. And then after that we'll see, maybe somewhere else to get my master's. Maybe I'll find a great job that I will be like, okay, this is it. This is what I want to do. I just want to say that uh, I would like to say that I'm very thankful that I'm here in Missouri Southern. I didn't expect that this little school, I mean, it's not little, little, but it's still, you know, um, it could change your life and it did. Like since August, I met so many great people, great friends, a lot of amazing connections throughout uh, uh, Southern Leadership Academy, you know, and then I'm involved in the community. So it's, it's amazing. It's a great experience. People here, they do not let me feel like I'm a stranger or they're not letting me feel like I am abroad, you know, like they feel, I feel like, oh, I'm home, you know, I know everybody, everybody knows me. That's amazing, you know, <laughs> yes. It's so humbling to see our international students having a great time and experiencing everything the world has to offer. I feel very happy for them. I do too. I'm glad to have them here. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have today for MOSO Update, folks. We hope you've enjoyed your time spent with us. It has been our pleasure. Join us next time as we strive to keep you connected with everything happening here in Lion Country.